1894, White Buffalo was born on the Hyder Hobby Farm. Um, and when she was born, the indigenous uh, Orville Looking Horse came from uh, the Dakotas and met with the Hyders to chat with them about the responsibilities that came with being gifted with the birth of a white buffalo. And he chatted with them about what it was the white buffalo had come to do. And she was, it's a, a prophecy of the Lakota when the times were difficult and the people were not well long ago. Um, the people had lost their their understanding of living in a good way, the Lakota. And the warrior, two warriors went out looking for bison and they came upon this woman who turned herself into she was a beautiful woman who came and chatted with them. She had come and said, tell the village that I'm coming and I'm going to teach them how to live in a good way. And as she turned around and walked away, she rolled and turned into a bison. And each time she rolled, she turned into a different color. And so the young men went back to the village and said, she's coming, so we need to prepare. And so she did indeed present herself and she presented the Lakota with um, the, the pipe and various ceremonies to teach the people what it meant to be living in a good way together. Um, and so she said that she would return. And since then there have been several white buffalo born. Um, but Miracle born in Janesville, Wisconsin. And people from around the world, people of the earth, First Nations people, peoples of all color and beliefs came to meet Miracle. And she was a very kind, kind buffalo. Now Miracle then, her father, Marvin, died. And uh, she, in turn, gave, uh, well, there was another buffalo then who was born after she died. Um, another white buffalo was born, and they called her Millennium. And then there was a third one, and it was a little male buffalo called, Fulfill they called it Fulfillment. I, I've known about this beautiful animal, this creature who's come to us in a sacred way since she was conceived and born. And uh, I come from Kenosha, Wisconsin, but I live in Ontario, Canada now, where we're working on truth and reconciliation um, for indigenous and non-indigenous peoples in Canada and all the First Nations. And in 2015, um, a study was released and it offered 94 calls to action. After thousands of First Nations people sat and told their stories of growing up and the residential school experiences, um, willing, willingly coming forward to experience that trauma emotionally again, to say to the people who are now living on Canada, Turtle Island, their, their beautiful island, what we call Canada. Um, so they summarized all of the recommendations. One of the questions was, what do, what do those of the people who have come from away need to do now to set things right? So they came up with 94 suggestions. And I work with a group of artists who are doing the 83rd call to action, which is that the Canada Council for the Arts support Indigenous and non-Indigenous artists working together to create art, to inspire people to acts of reconciliation in Canada. So when we first started our project, 
of indigenous and non-indigenous artists coming together in a good way to create a series of pieces of art inspiring each other um, to create. Um, I came down and offered Miracle Tobacco and asked her if she would please walk with us in a good way. Um, so I've, I've tried to stay in touch with her spirit. I carry her spirit with me wherever I go. I am non-indigenous. Um, Miracle works cross-culturally. So I would like to acknowledge, first of all, that the lands that I'm standing on have been long inhabited by many, many very, very capable, able, wonderful, creative children of the Creator, good spirit, the kind spirit, um, some of which have been uh, the Anishinaabek people on their migration from the ocean um, up through this way, up through Wisconsin, up through Michigan, up into uh, Canada. Right now, I believe it is the Ho-Chuk uh, First Nation uh, t traditional territories. Um, and so I would like to offer tobacco um, that our gathering today will inspire goodness only and that um, you who are with us um, will begin to ask a question, what does truth and reconciliation with the original peoples of this land look like and sound like today in my heart with all my ancestors from afar behind me surrounded by all of the goodness of this earth and the people who were the original peoples of this area. How do we return to equity, respect, and the two raw wampums of friendship, of peace, brotherhood, and respect? Ah, bonjour, Good morning to everybody who's here with us via technology. Um, we're in Janesville, Wisconsin, and standing next to me is Val Heider. <clears throat> Val Heider. And so from the day that the miracle was born, the Heider farm, uh, it, was, it was changed in many, many ways because we started showing up. Uh, the first time we did a ceremony was with a Native American that came from the... Um, Pine Ridge? Uh, yeah. Yep, Pine yeah. Ridge, Orville looking And horse. his family. Yep. Oh. Orville's been here several times. Orville taught us and told us the first time the story of the White Buffalo. We had no idea what it was. So, and so today, my fellow artists are also on this Zoom call, um, as well as all of the people on our round table who are interested in being here today with us. And I just want to give you a close-up of Miracle's headstone. Miracle died in 2004. And I'm going to switch this image. If I can. Yeah. There we go. So this is her headstone. Now, are the other two also buried here, Val? Uh, Miracle's dad is buried here uh -huh. also. Um, her mom, I think, is buried up on the hill in the back back there. So here she is, and there are uh, there's a gathering of people from a diversity and inclusion group here in Janesville, Wisconsin, who have joined us um, in their quest for truth and reconciliation um, and peace. And um, so we're here today in the four directions. And we invite each and every one of you to take a moment with us. Um, we each have tobacco. And Carol, my sister, is uh, a helper today here. And I'm going to lay this tobacco down and Barb do you want to offer your yes this is a prayer from Chief Yellow Hawk oh great spirit Mary, whose, whose voice, voice I, I hear, I hear in, in the winds and, and whose breath gives light to all the world hear, hear me I come, I come before you one of your children, children. I am small and weak. I need your strength and wisdom. Let me walk in beauty and make my eyes ever behold the red or purple sunset. Make my hands respect the things you have made. My ears sharp to hear your voice. Make me wise so that I might know the things you have taught my people. 
the lessons you have given me in every leaf and rock. I seek strength not to be superior to my brothers, but to be able to fight my greatest enemy, myself. Make me ever ready to come to you with clean hands and straight eyes, so that when my fades as a fading sunset, my spirit come up to you without shame. From Chief Yellowhawk. Um, for all of the artists who are present on the Zoom, I will be laying tobacco um, at the um, here to miracle to ask that when we enter into the sweat lodge and begin this process, whether you enter it or not, um, that the kind spirit once again touch your heart, touch your mind, touch your spirit to be able to create images to inspire acts of personal and collective truth and reconciliation in Simcoe County. Um, and that anyone who engages with the images and experiences them also be touched to personal, collective, and hopefully someday institutional reconciliation in Simcoe County. So I will bring home packets of tobacco for you that have been here from Miracle on your behalf. So back to you, Aaron um, and John. reconciliation and uh, the wonderful art that um, she's been doing. Just um, thanks Mary Lou for um, taking this time to have this trip and bring it back to us and um, we send our prayers out to the elders and uh, and thank you so much Miigwech Cooks Jim. So I, um, I found Miracle back in 96 at the time she had already turned her colors and um, people were still coming to this farm. Um, she's buried right here. Um, and uh, her father's buried here too. And uh, I thought, wanted to at least share, most people hadn't been able to see, this is how she was when she was a, a calf. And what made it very significant about, about Miracle is there's been a lot of white buffaloes that have been born. But she turned from white to black. If I can get the black. Can you get that? Can you see the zoom there? Can you see her? It's kind of a lot of sunshine here. There we go. No, but we can see it. Yeah, there we go. Okay. 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 And then she turned to red. She's beautiful. Okay. And then she turned yellow. And then she was brown. And according to the prophecies, they said she was to turn back white again. And um, the problem was we went to a second war that we weren't supposed to be at, and that was Iraq. We were already in Afghanistan. And we started a second war on false pretenses. And uh, her heart gave out and she died. Um, they did save the, uh, her hide and her, uh, her skull, which is in the museum, which I'll see if we can at least go and see that. Um, and that hide could turn back white again. But the thing that I've, I've learned from being around this farm and seeing the hiders and the way they treated people, it came up with the principles of peace which is walk without judgment of the color of the skin, walk without judgment 
for um, the skin, the gender, the orientation, physical, spiritual, intellectual, or emotional. But look at the person for their heart and judge them on that and decide if they're there, if what they're here for. Um, I've seen many miracles on, on this farm happen. When the Tibetan monks were here for Miracle Second Chance, let me go on. There was a second white buffalo that was born on this farm and it lived for four days. And that's in the museum. And um, that got, one got tangled up into grapevines and died. There was a third white buffalo that was born here and that one was a male. The other two were females. And that was Miracle Second Chance. And he was born in a really a thunderstorm real loud. I used to live, my house I used to have was behind the farm and I mean the whole house shook. It was probably one of the loud, loudest things I had heard. Um, and then the male buffalo was born. And um, then um, we started seeing a resurgence of people coming to see um, Miracle Second Chance. The interesting thing about it was if you went up on the hill over there and you prayed, Miracle Second Chance would come down and see you. If you didn't pray, he just stayed up on the hill. And we had the Tibetan band came in Beloit and played, and they came up to see Miracle. And I was doing the tours here, and uh, they said, well, we didn't see the buffalo. And I said, well, did you guys pray? And they said, no. And they said, well, let's go up and pray. So they went up and started a chant, and it was one of the most beautiful things I ever saw here. During their chant, a rainbow appeared onto this farm, and it went up into the sky. Oh, wow. And Miracle Second Chance came running, you could see the hill over there, came running down that hill like a dog with the rear, oh, the rear legs trying to get in front of the front ones, and, yeah. oh, somebody's praying here, I gotta come down and see them. And um, wow. he, um, he ended up, uh, got taken from uh, a lightning storm also and uh, was killed. Um, and I don't have the whys behind a lot of this stuff. I just know that this is what happened. Um, and I know that the teachings that Miracle has shared that I have seen with people, um, it's been phenomenal to experience these things. And um, I hope that these teachings you can take and, and share that with people to walk without judgment of the color, the skin, the gender, or the orientation. And that um, that's the way the hydras treated everybody. I used to go up and attend the three fires a lot. And uh, I had been gifted the Grandmother Moon ceremony by one of the elders there. And that was the white buffalo ceremony. But it's a, it's a group of women get together, all in skirts, and. They have a male start the fire, and they say prayers with tobacco. Pass tobacco around and, and make tobacco ties and say prayers in prayer. And this can be, to anybody can do this. You know, anybody can do this, but it's an all women's ceremony, except for the person who starts the fire, where we get in a circle and say prayers with tobacco for the earth and the women of the earth and and our grandmothers, we pray to our grandmothers, and we do this on the full moon, just as the moon is coming up. And uh, it's a very powerful ceremony. So I, I, I do believe that a lot of this prayer needs to start coming back again, you know, for, for the environment and for those that are unborn, you know. Thank you. And thank you for the opportunity to speak to. Uh-huh.